Hi, listener. Welcome to this Yellow Vision podcast, where my guests and I discuss our goals and our vision for ourselves within the entertainment industry, because the sky truly is the limit. I'm your host, Esther T. Furman of Miss Yellow Productions. Let's get things rolling. Rolling, rolling. This is my conversation with actor Eric Brooks. Eric Brooks, we both did a commercial for the Sierra Club years ago, but you've also done commercials for UMUC, BMW, the National Harbor, and Dunkin' Donuts, amongst many others. So do you have a favorite commercial set you've been on? The National Harbor, for sure, is my favorite one because they gave me control, if I'm honest about it. Um, Getting there for day one, they had a crew filming before me, and I could just get a feel that they needed someone to give a spark to the whole you know, energy and vibe to the commercial. So we sat down and did a take at a restaurant and the guy looked at me and said, oh, you said something interesting. Keep going. I said, now, you sure you're going to give me the keys to this car now? Because if you give them to me, I'm not giving them back. And he said, go right ahead. And from there on, we had a ball. And yeah, it's honestly, I think my favorite commercial of all the commercials I've done, and I've done a ton of them. That's so cool. Was it about four of you on the set? Um, I'm going to say six total the first day. It was four of us, two couples, at least by the time I got to set. And then the second day, it was up to six of us. And then we finished the day with two of us, me and another young lady, finished the day off, which um, even though the ending was a bit challenging in the water, it was still a very, very fun day and who knows maybe i'll work with them again or you know find something as fun and challenging i I did something not you know long ago with with car max which was pretty fun as well i'll admit that was a two-day shoot did you get to drive a car no i got to ride a bike and with car max um i got to look as if i was gonna drive a car but i didn't they probably knew better than let me drive the car so i didn't get you know, access to that. But it was still very fun. Not quite as fun as National Harbor, but very fun in its own right. Those are the top two. Yes. Okay, now National Harbor, you had to swim? The issue was they give you these, like, paddle bikes to move around, and the issue I had was the bike they gave me, the bike was broke, to make a long story short. So I had to drive this broken bike in the water and make it look like nothing was wrong with it. I was happy with my companion mate. Um, and the bike's handle um, pads or whatever you call it, they were shedding. So I have all this black stuff all over my clothing, but thank God they bought the clothing for me that day. And I couldn't hold, if I hold the, the steering wheel on the bike straight, um, I would turn right. So I had to hold it at an angle just to go straight. And then on top of that, it's like, oh, paddle way out there in the Potomac. Okay, now paddle way back here and, and back there, et cetera. And I'm like, you know, I just got this bike five minutes ago and you want me to ride this thing as if nothing's wrong. But um, yeah. I guess that's what acting is, though. You got to sell it. <laughs> oh, I, I, had, I had to sell it for sure. <laughs> oh, my. Um. And it was the very last thing I had to do for that commercial. But again, it was worth it because we had so much fun, even way before that, that that was just the cherry on top. Nice. So when did you start acting? I started in the church um, before I knew I was going to take it as a career, but it wasn't until I got into college and my English professor said, okay, I want you to do a paper on a career other than what you came to school for. And friends and family would say, you should do that acting thing. And I was kind of hesitant about it, but I said, okay, I'll do my paper on actors and actresses. So I did my presentation and my teacher pulled me aside and she said, yeah, you're not a computer programmer. You're an actor. You should change your career. So coming from a teaching background, I figured she had a vision. I said, you know what? I'll take a theater course, see how I feel about fully going into this acting thing. So I walk into theater class one day 
and a teacher makes us audition for this musical called Pippin. And after going through the process of making the cut and also the rehearsals, which if anyone has ever done a musical knows what I'm talking about, whereas you might have an hour practice with the vocal coach, an hour practice with the dance rehearsal group, and then an hour practice with your actual acting, which is totally different than if you're just used to just focusing on your acting and that's about it. So after going through that and then especially tech week for theater people, um, I was like, you know what? I think I can do this and I've been doing it ever since. So even with the big, huge time commitment of having to do all these different types of trainings just to do this part, you went for it. Yes, yes, yes. And then, you know, the big thing after I decided I was going to take this as a career, it's like, okay, where am I going to finish my studies? Because at the time I was at a community college. So I originally was going to go to Howard University because they have a great acting program. Um, I like the D.C. area. I had friends and family that was going there. But as I was taking this um, TV class, this guy goes, you ever heard of New York Film Academy? And I'm like, no. He's like, well, you can focus on what you want to do and get your degree. And so I go online and I apply. But I originally got accepted into their Orlando, Florida location. I did that because one of my cousins that I'm close with, she was going to school in Daytona. So I was like, okay, I got family there I can hang out with on the weekend. So it feels like home away from home. I always said I was going to live in Florida growing up, going to Disney World all the time. And I was going to be at Hollywood Studios every day. So I thought this is the perfect marriage made in heaven for me. And then all of a sudden I get that email that says, Mr. Brooks, unfortunately, that school will not be ready for you to start the semester you want to start, but you can choose between our New York or LA location. And so after being disappointed about hearing that news, my mother helped convince me to go to the New York location. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I ended up finishing my studies in the great state of New York. I never knew you spent time up there. Yes. Yes. And, and so that has always been like my home away from home. Um, it's one of the few places when I go there, I just have so many memories because I think about the journey I would take each and every day as a young 22 year old, just studying and trying to get better because outside of living there, I'd spent summers in Cincinnati where my mother is from. But at that time I hadn't really lived anywhere other than Ohio and Maryland. So to move to a big city like that was, um, like, okay, am I ready for it? But it fit my personality like a glove. I felt like it was a competitive type of town. I'm competitive um, at heart. And um, I just, I loved it. And I still reminisce about it at times. So um, I'm, I'm thankful for that journey. Very nice. So you've also worked as a brand ambassador. So I kind of wanted to know, what does that work entail? Oh my God, I've done um, brand ambassador work in DC, working with the Disney Network. Um, the most interesting one I did was one in New York with Sci-Fi, as far as giving away gift cards to, I guess you want to say homeless or elderly people that need money throughout the city. So that's two of the brand ambassador type of jobs I can think of that come to mind, other than your usual you know, setting up in a store, um, passing out, you know, protein powders or or drinks, whatever it is that they, they have that they're trying to promote. But um, those are the two that stick out to me, the D.C. and New York ones that I did. And it's, it's usually great, you know, because you, you almost feel like you have a regular nine to five being able to stay in a steady place, you know, for a few days. But yeah, it's a, it's a great gig, especially if you're looking for work in between gigs, is what I tell young actors and actresses. That's a good way to make money while you're not getting a booking. So you've also worked at the Preakness. So what do you do there when you're on a shift? Preakness. Okay, um, that was pretty interesting because I was in charge of the high roller suites. And so the first year... 
the particular suite that had the Maryland Live crew, I kind of noticed that one of the guys was sneaking in people that necessarily didn't bring in a ticket. So I'm not a big snitch guy, but when he walked past me, I said, look, dude, I'm not telling, but I, I know what you're doing. And I guess he thought maybe I would snitch. And he was like, oh, come to my suite and um, eat and drink whatever you want. It's on me. I said, OK, that's more like it because you, you know, daggone well, you ain't supposed to do what I saw you do. And so the second <laughs> the second year, you know, I guess if if you do it more than once, they try to keep you at the same location. So they brought me and one particular young lady back to the same location. So before I could say anything. He slipped me and her some money because it was different. The first year we did it, it was, you know, as long as you got a piece of your ticket, you can come in and out as you please. They must have known what happened. So the second year, it's once you turn in your ticket, that's it. You're not supposed to have access to come in and out. That's it. And so he slipped us some money. And as starving artists, we're like, OK, you can come in and out as long as, again, we still have access to the bar, to the food. You know, everybody can enjoy Preakness and have a good old time, right? It looks like a good old time. Oh, yeah, it is. It it makes you want to, you know, enjoy it. It's like any old event. You go to a football game live or a basketball game live. Not that it's not good on TV, but it's something like nothing like being there in person. So, yeah, it was amazing to do. But after two years, I was done with it and ready to move on. All right. Well, can you tell us about mass casualty role playing and what kind of scenarios they have you act out? Role playing. Now, my most interesting role playing job that they had me play out was I was a drug dealer. Um, they had, I guess, students where they used to catching criminals through cyber world, whether it's through text messaging instant messaging on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. And so, like, if you've seen any drug movie, you try to figure out the drug cartel, who's the drug dealer, who's the pusher, et cetera, et cetera. So depending on your character, you either stationed in Annapolis or Baltimore City. And since my character was a street drug dealer, I was stationed in Annapolis, Maryland for about six weeks where I would go to different locations and send messages from these devices. Um, it was 12 hour shifts every day. Um, it was fun, but it was long. So you were kind of ready for it to be over. But at the same time for the pay, you were like, I really wish you'd keep me six months instead of six weeks. But Hey, it was very interesting and fun, especially for me because my hours were, what were they, 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. And so, yeah, at near the end of the night, I would usually go to the same few couple bars or restaurants in Annapolis. And one of those nights, I, you know, fell asleep in the car trying to stay up. And police knocks on the window like, what are you, do what are you doing? And takes my ID. But I guess whoever it is that was with the program, had something with my license to let them know what I was doing because within two minutes they bring my ID back and they're like, just try to stay awake. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you wanted to tell me twice. Um, so, and and the good thing was our supervisor knew that half of us were actors and actresses. So even though I would say about around 8 p.m., we got a technically like a script of where we were supposed to go and what we were supposed to say to make this training thing work. He was like, look, I know you're an actor, so if you want to change things up in the script and instead of going here, go there, instead of writing this, write that, you know, as long as you're in your four mile radius, I don't really care because the students technically are supposed to be able to handle any situation that comes at them. So it was like, oh, really? You're going to give us that type of freedom? Bet. We're going to jump on it. So, um, yeah, that was one that. I only got to do once. Maybe I'll get to do it again. Who knows? But it was interesting and something I will never forget. Now, Brooks, you're also a male model and have done fashion shows. 
But to be invited to a fashion show, you have to look good and healthy. So can you give us an example of how you maintain a healthy body and healthy skin? A healthy body and a healthy skin. Um, drink your water, people. You got to stay hydrated. And I want to say the biggest tip that I want to give people um, starting off is read the ingredients and in whatever it is you eat. I get a lot of people that come at me and say, oh, Eric, um, can I eat these chips? They say organic and non-GMO, so they must be healthy, right? But when you read the ingredients and what they're cooked in, whether it's canola oil or sunflower seed oil, that right there takes away all the organic or non-GMO flashlight stuff they put on the front of the bag to distract you. So, for example, I eat peanut butter. And normally peanut butter, especially for cutting, is not too good. But it's the type of peanut butter that I eat that makes it okay for me to hit the goals I have for my body. So read your ingredients. Um, Stay consistent. That's the biggest thing. It's one thing to exercise when you're motivated, but it's the days you don't want to get out of bed or whenever it is you train and you still go in and put in that work. That's what's going to make you and break you. And it's a marathon, not a sprint. So learn, you know, throughout your journey. You know, I've had certain years where I said, okay, this year I want to get better at my cardio. Then I might have another year and say, okay, my cardio is looking pretty well, but I want to get better at the weight training. And for example, this year I said, okay, even though my eating is kind of near where I wanted to be, I want to add more vegetables to my diet. So I'm eating more vegetables. So um, yeah, I it's it's something we all can improve on. Even with what I do, I'm always looking to improve and I feel like I am improving each and every year. I guess the key is to try to stay consistent with it and mindful of what you're doing, <laughs> what you're ingesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because people look at me and say, oh, you can get away with that because you go to the gym. I go, you know, I'm not the only person that wakes up early and goes to the gym or the only person that goes to the gym in the afternoon, even when I said the difference between me and the other people is I'm I'm paying attention to what I do. But it can it can be done, you know, you, and you got to know yourself. You know, I, for the most part, like training by myself, even though there is one exercise class I do take um if you know you need an accountability partner get an accountability partner and my accountability partner to be honest is my eye watch um you know i've added people on there and it's good because you see okay oh they didn't burn x amount of calories i'm gonna push and trying to burn those type of calories or i got another accountability partner in new york who i get a lot of advice from miss joy shout out to you um you know always on me about hey How's your diet? What are your goals? You know, someone just to keep you focused and those extra set of eyes, because sometimes, let's be honest, we can lie to ourselves and be a little bit lenient. Oh, yeah, I can take a day off or two. I don't need to do X, Y and Z. But having that accountability partner going, no, this isn't the time to slack off. This is where you need to pick it back up because we know what goals you have set for yourself. So, um. Again, anything that gets the job done, hey, do whatever it takes. 100% agree. Brooks, in addition to staying physically healthy, do you have any advice on how to maintain a healthy mindset? Well, for me, um, I have a journal that I write into each and every day. Um, that helps me with the spiritual side of myself. Um, so I write every day, whether it's a, a sentence or a paragraph, whatever's on my mind, um, just to clear my thoughts and keep my goals um, in line. And then for me, I have a prayer group that I'm a part of every week. Um, we get together on Tuesdays and Fridays at seven in the morning. And um, it's good because we, we all get overwhelmed with whatever it is we're dealing with. But as you know, I'm praying for my situations. You hear what everyone else is dealing with. And it's like we're all in this together to see everyone overcome the obstacles that they're dealing with at that particular time. Um, and then just having somebody that you can vent to. Sometimes we just need someone not to solve our problems, but just someone that will listen 
as we vent and get whatever it is that's bothering us on our chest. And it's good to have that one person that you feel like you can go to and that's not going to judge you and make you feel any worse than you already feel at that particular time. So that's another thing I like having is someone that I can talk to, or usually it's more people talking to me and getting their things off their chest to me. But you know, every now and then I might need to get something off my chest. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It's a way to help each other out. Everyone has their good days or bad days. If we're honest about it. For sure. Did you have anything that you wanted to promote or anything upcoming that you're excited about? Um, I have my fingers crossed about a particular gig that I actually can't talk about, but um, God willing, it comes in fruition and we'll start filming next year. And if we start filming next year, then you can possibly see me um, everywhere come 2024, 25. Um, just got to get things finalized with that. Um, other than that, i um, looking forward to traveling, which I also love to do. Um, going to a couple, well, one place I've been to, one place I haven't been to before, and hopefully I can have, add one more other place to that list of somewhere I haven't been to before, but looking forward to that. And acting-wise, um, other than what I just said, um, just always submitting um just want to say for those of you that are watching this you know there's going to be times where you're booking everything there's going to be times where you're going days months maybe even years without booking anything but don't quit don't give up all it takes is for one or so people to believe in you and that could jump start your career to dimensions you never believed in so keep at it don't let go of that dream it's easier said than done because the human side of us hates rejection. So when we keep hearing no, it's like, oh, you think I'm not good enough to be part of your project, but it just wasn't meant to be whether we admit it or not. And, you know, we're impatient. So it's not until we get that thing that was supposed to be for us. And it's like, oh, OK, that's why I didn't get that, because I was supposed to be waiting on this. But until then, it's like, I don't want to hear all that. I want to be booked right here, right now. So, yeah, it's 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 tough. I get it, but um, keep at it. Um, and when you book it, you'll have an inspiration story for all of those around you. We all have a story to tell. This is just my story, but um, I'm sure there's many of you out there watching this that have a story to tell me, Esther, and everyone else out there. So, hey, let your voice be heard. Well, thank you so much, Eric. Always a pleasure. You know I'm a phone call away, so um, this was exciting. That was my conversation with Eric Brooks. Please subscribe to Cielo Vision on Google Podcasts if you enjoyed it. I'm grateful to you, my friends. All the best until next time.